And we're live. Sounds good. <laughs> How are you doing today, Drew? I'm doing awesome. I've had a great morning so far. Awesome. So I know that you're obviously big into fitness. Um, what does your mornings consist of? I follow you on social media. And so you're always working out. You're always doing something. What is What does your mornings look like? So first thing in the morning, I grab um, my Bible usually, and I start off with reading a verse which puts me in the right mindset. Um, I think every morning we all struggle to get up and do the things that um, are a little bit difficult perhaps. And I have to be honest, working out is difficult. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, getting in the right mindset for me and then also making sure that I'm getting a little bit of food before I hit the gym. I started off in the beginning of my journey with fasted cardio and fasted training, which I'm looking back now and it, it definitely hurt my gains. So I'm making sure that I'm getting a good breakfast in. And honestly, I try not to look at my shoes more than 10 to 15 minutes. Cause if I do, I'll be sitting <laughs> in bed looking at them a lot longer. Um, but I just get up and I go, I, I go right away to planet fitness. And as soon as I get that workout in, it's a different game from there on out for the rest of that day. That's awesome. And so you said you, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been on the fitness journey? When did this process start for you? Sure. So I started in December of 2021 um, with Fit Society. That's the shirt that I have on right now. Okay. Um, his name is Tommy Andratus. He's my trainer and he's out of Hazlitt. But we started off with one session a week and it was about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And then um, I slowly started working in probably two sessions a week, maybe three, four months into that. Um, and now I'm up to five, five to six days a week of training. Wow. Yeah. And so you went from doing nothing, right? Absolutely nothing. I was 200 pounds. Wow. Um, yeah. I COVID, you know, it was hard for me. I went into a severe depression, um, started eating a lot, didn't exercise and I got up to, to 200 pounds. And for me wow. as division one athlete, I didn't like the way that I looked in the mirror. So I knew that I had to do something and it was time to do, do it. So yeah, December, 2021. How, what, and what was that process? Like, like, I mean, I could imagine that when you start a journey like that, it's got to feel so overwhelming and difficult and just like, cause I know like if I allow myself to get out of shape and then I like start doing it again, I'm like, ugh, like, I just feel like heavy and like just so out of shape. I just don't feel like I can do it. What was that like? So I have to be honest, there's the intimidation factor, right? Um, not wanting to do it, thinking that you're not going to be able to accomplish it, failing. We all go through those things. I started off with doing small goal, set, goal setting and then achieving those. I first started off with actually walking around the pond once at a park. And then wow. it turned into two laps around the pond. And then it turned into three. And then it was like, hey, we're going to jog one, we're going to walk two. And then it was jog two, walk one. And eventually I started feeling myself feeling better, you know, just weight started shedding off of me. My mind was in the right place. My heart was in the right place. I wanted more. And that's when I took the next step to contact a personal trainer and say, Hey, I need some accountability, not just walking in the park <laughs> and let's set up at least once a week. And that's, I guess where people have a hard time and struggle with making that transition from doing absolutely nothing to just getting, getting up and doing something. And for me, it right. was one lap around the pond. And right. then you know, growth from there on out. Well, and that's how a lot of growth starts is you start by just doing a mile or you start by just walking or you start just by doing something. Sure. And then it just go like, it just, it grows from there. Like just recently I started running again, uh, probably a couple like a month or two ago. And it's difficult. Like when you, when you don't <laughs> run for a while and then you start running again, it's like, Oh my gosh, like I am so out of running shape. Yes. And, uh, and I was doing the lift, the elliptical every morning, but like, and so thankfully my cardio was there and I was able to like push my way through it. Right. But had I not done that, it would have been a lot more difficult. So like when you start a process like that, you're like, man, this is so hard. But then uh, through like, I don't know, like a, a week or two, like, you eventually start seeing like, oh, okay, this is getting easier. A little bit easier. And now time. I need to train for something. Now <laughs> I need to go further. <laughs> and so then you start goal setting from there. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I didn't have the goal of doing a bikini competition right away. Of course, you know, that was not even in my mindset. And then when somebody actually put it into a possibility for me, that's when I was like, oh, you think I could do that? Because I did not see my, you know, I'm coming from a 200 pound person who's sitting on the couch every day, waking up, can't wait to eat sweets and treats to uh, getting up and eating egg whites and in oatmeal to getting to the gym before nine o'clock. So 
Um, I just, I encourage everybody to try and take that one little step, that small step to get there. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that you mentioned that I thought was really cool is you, you said, I, I try not to look at my shoes for more than 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> That's that David Goggins mentality. It I know is. you're a big David Goggins fan. I love him. I, I love David Goggins too. And so, um, I often think like whenever I don't want to do something like he's just like in my head yelling at me, get after a bitch. <laughs> yes, hundred percent. I was just going to say that. Well, when you were talking about the morning thing and yes, of course I love the Bible as my go-to, but there's also a hard side of me. I have to be realistic <laughs> here too. So I love that, you know, in your face, nitty gritty type of coaching. Mm. And that's all David Goggin style. Yeah. And not only that, but the underdog coming up and winning and improving and making, you know, achieving goals. Those things to me are huge. David yeah. Goggins was 300 pounds, overweight, you know, spraying for cockroaches. And yeah. there was a part of my life where I felt worthless, abandoned. Um, I didn't love myself. And I just, I listened to David Goggins and it was like, we're going to do something here. I'm capable of it. Is that what motivated you? No, you know, it's not. And I don't like the word motivation because I don't Goggins either. will say this. I don't it either. comes and it goes, right? Yeah. So, but I mean, is that what like inspired you to want to do something? Um, no, I was at rock bottom and I was suicidal to be honest. Mm. So when I hit that point, I just, I didn't want to live like that anymore. I got down on my knees and I asked God, help me. I cannot do this anymore. I was trying to do it on my own every single day and failing and failing and failing. And it's like, this isn't working, Drew. You've got to find something different. What did you think you were failing at? Um, you know, a lot of things, my relationships, I was hurting people left and right. I had abused alcohol and drugs in the past. There were so many things that I was ashamed and, and, uh, guilty of that. I, I would needed to go back and, you know, ask for forgiveness for those, to those people and to God. And now it's just, a, it's a different life. It's a different chapter. I've gotten that forgiveness. I even saw somebody at the gym the other day that I've been needing to apologize for about two decades. And I walked oh. by and I walked by and I kept <laughs> saying like, hey, do you see me? Maybe you'll see me and notice me and we can conversate. But I, I was nervous. I needed to apologize to that person. So I went through my workouts. I was probably 45, 50 minutes in. And I was like, Drew, you've got to go do this. You've got to go do it. And I'll tell you what, I went up to, it was a mom and a dad of a kid I went to high school with at Okemos. And I went over to them and they they recognized me after I was like, do you know who this is? And they were like, Oh my gosh. Yes. And, but I told them my story and where I came from and how I was sorry. And I was met with open arms with love and gratitude. And it's just those small little things that you can do throughout your day that impact other people too. So not only am I on this fitness journey, but I'm in this journey of healing, restoring myself and healing and restoring some of my relationships too, because I hurt some people in the past when I was drinking and using drugs that, I've got a lot of apologies to make up and I'll probably be doing it for the rest of my life, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think if somebody, somebody can look at your life now and they see the change that you've made, they see the positive change that you've made in your life and they're like, oh, okay, she's actually living what she's saying. Yeah. And that's so important. It is because, you know, my dad used to say, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, dad, you can't live by that. <laughs> so uh, it's important. And my grandpa used to say, you know, show me, don't tell me. Mm. So we have two different perspectives here. Um, and I, I live by the show me, don't tell me because <laughs> it's important it to, to speak the truth and live out the truth that you have spoken. So yeah. um, I'm doing that right now, one day at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's important. Uh, how long have you been, have you always been religious? So, you know, I was baptized Catholic when I was young, very young. Uh, we went to a Catholic school. We went to St. Martha's for a year, uh, while we were waiting to get into Okemos High School School Choice. And then, um, we lost our connection with God. I would say my family did. We were kind of the Christers, the Christmas and Easters, right? Oh, <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah. So we were Christers. We did the are typical. Going, are you going this Easter? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we would do the Christmas and Easter and we weren't really heavily dedicated to God and his word and the Bible and Bible teaching. Um, it wasn't until I went into work out in Williamson for top flight financial that I came across, uh, Tim and Tracy Bays and they were the ones that introduced me and really got my heart on fire for the Lord. Uh, they were hosting Bible study inside of, uh, top flight financial, not in the workplace, but, um, before work hours. And then, They've also taken over Homeless Angels, which is a mm. nonprofit shelter for the homeless. And that's the one that uh, Mike Carl was a part of, right? Yes, I believe okay. so. Yes. Yeah. And then they he works at GM too. Oh, does he? Yeah. Nice. Yep. Yeah. So we uh, had a great relationship with the, the Bayses. They were the ones that started me on my relationship with Christ. And then 
I will say that I got into Mount Hope Church over on Christ Road, the church with all the flags is what everybody knows it <laughs> as. Um, and as soon as I went in there, I felt like it was home, and I really haven't looked back since then. So it's been, I would say, 10 to 15 years since I've really wow. dug in to have a relationship with Christ. But more importantly, four years sober, and that last four years of my life is where I've kind of transitioned. And the health and the working out in the gym has also added an aspect of that too. Yeah, absolutely. Now, something happens like when you decide that you want to change your life and make it better and you want to just start start focusing on yourself and making yourself just a better person all the way around. People to tend to not like that. You know, like if if they if you were somebody they would hang around when you went to the bar to get like you'd go to the bar together or you do drugs together or you just were being mediocre with the, with the, with these people and then they start seeing you do all these things. They don't like that. Yeah. Did you experience any of that? So I will say that I've had some silent haters and then there's a couple <laughs> <laughs> ones that like to, you know, put it on the front of the newspaper. I try to use it as fuel for my fire because I'm one of those people that tell me some, I can't do something and I'm going to show mm. you that I can. Yeah. Um, it's not that I have a chip on my shoulder because I don't, but uh, I have something to prove and I'm out here to prove it now. Yeah, but well, the haters, I take them with pride because they've made me who I am too. You know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here where I am today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's, that's something that I've had to experience too. Um, even just by doing like the podcast, I, sp- I spend so much time doing it. And so like a lot of people like don't like that because they're like, I would spend more time with them and they just kind of, you know, fell aside. They're not doing any- anything significant with their life. They're not working out. They're not chasing goals and dreams and so, yeah, it's something that just happens. Yeah. I will yeah. say my family, and I have got a large group of friends that have been super supportive, of course, my online followers and stuff too, that have continually pushed me. Even when I'm down, I'll post, post something like I'm not having a great day, and they're like, you got this, you're going to get back on track. You know, there's a lot There's a lot more of the positive than there is the negative. Unfortunately, the negative seems to stick out sometimes a little bit harder yeah, and further. Yeah, always does. <laughs> but my family has been awesome. My friends have been awesome. And I've also told them, hey, I'm going to be a little bit selfish right now. Um, I'm working on a goal that is a selfish goal. Uh, With the bikini competition, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of requirements, and a lot of dedication. It's nothing personal to you guys. I'm just trying to heal myself fully, too. Yeah, absolutely. And and you need those things. You need accomplishments. You know, and and especially if you're in the fitness realm, like, you need something to train for. You need, like, a a goal and something to look forward to something to like keep your focus going. Absolutely. Well, my trainer actually was one that he said that too. He's like, Drew, you're doing really good, but like, what's the ultimate goal here? And I was like, goal, what are you talking about? (laughs) He's like, no, what's your goal? And I still was like, I didn't have a goal. I think it took me seven, eight months to get a goal. Wow. Yeah. So you were just working out aimlessly, like just, just training and wanting to lose weight. And at first I will admit that I was going for skinny. Okay. We're not. We're no longer going for skinny. We're going for strong. <laughs> so we've switched modes here. We're no longer in calorie deficit. We're just shooting for gains. That's awesome. So, training for the bikini uh, competition. What is what does that look like? Like, are you are you eating a certain diet? Are you do what kind of workouts are you doing? So right now, I'm focusing hard on my glutes and my delts, just because that's where I need to grow personally for my body. Everybody's different. Yeah. Um. But in bikini specifically, the shoulders and the the glutes are. A huge judging point. Uh, they're, they're not where they need to be for me personally. So I'm doing three days of legs, two days of shoulders, and two days of rest right now. Um, my macros are currently adjusted. I just started about a week ago with my macros, and can, I'm at. Can you explain macros to me? Because I, I, I was. We're gonna like dumb it down right now. Um, <laughs> sure, I'll do my best. So I'm into I'm into fitness and I'm into health, but I honestly don't know much about macros. And so I was actually talking to my. Uh, my friend, he's been on this podcast a few times. Um, he's a trainer and I'm like, can you explain macros to me? Like, I want to like start focusing on that. Yes. Can you explain that to me? I'll do my best. (laughs) I've also brought on some people to help me with my macros. How do you, how do you figure out what your macros are? So you have to look at your fats, your proteins and your carbs. Those are your three categories for your macros. You need to, if it depends on what your goals are. If you're striving for muscle gains, you want to have your protein at a certain percentage. If you're striving for weight loss, you want to have, you know, your macros, your proteins, your fats, and your carbs at a certain percentage for each. Um, right now, I'm at macros that, my protein is at like 150 grams, so it's one gram per weight of body weight. I'm at 150 pounds. I'm going to write this down. Hold on. Sure. No <laughs> 
And, and this it, is, you know, I think everybody will be individually specific for what their goals are. So if you're, if you're wanting to put muscle on, should you be at one gram of protein per body weight? One to one and a half. One to one and a half. And I'm not a dietitian, so please. You're good. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll research say. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, because that's something I want to do. I want to lean. I want to get leaner, but I also, I don't want to lose muscle. I want to, I want to be strong. Right. You know? So you want to have the one to one and a half grams of your protein per body weight. Now, right now my, my proteins in, or not my proteins, my fat and my carbs are at, I want to say 50 grams. You brought your folder. I did. <laughs> you were prepared. <laughs> oh, okay. So I fibbed. My carbs are at 179, 179 grams. And my fat is at 49. Mm. So, um, like a one third of your body weight should be dedicated to your fats. And then right now for what I'm going carbs, because carbs are what your body uses as energy fuel for your muscles. Right. So I, at first was eating way too much protein, not enough carbs and not enough fat. I was really lean, but not bulking, right? Not gaining much muscle. Um, until we added the fats and the carbs in there, that's where I'm starting to see the full round muscles that just look healthy. They don't look depleted and they don't look flat. Right. So um, my best explanation of it is you have to have a good amount of fats. You have to have a good, especially a good amount of carbs if you're lifting heavy. And then you want to keep your protein up higher. Beyond that, I don't know much about macros. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I was just told enough. what to eat and that's what I'm eating. That's fair <laughs> enough. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's not something that I've necessarily studied. And um you know, I like, I don't, I eat healthy for the most part. Like I eat, I mean, I eat a lot of red meat, but, um, I'm going to switch over to a lot of chicken and, and possibly fish. I don't, I'm not a huge fish person, but it, I want to like kind of change up my diet a little bit. Um, but I eat healthy for the most part, I eat a lot of eggs and I, I typically fast every day. Um, Which is good too. intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. So I don't eat till like 11 o'clock every day. And I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I also Find work me with my peanut butter jar. My <laughs> <laughs> I work out fasted too, which, which I, I find like great benefits in, um, I, I run and do yeah. like body weight stuff, but which in that I was doing that big time, especially when I was trying to lose the fat. Right. I mean, yeah. that's, if you want to target fat, do fasted cardio. Yeah. Um, you're going to burn a lot of calories though, too, which is your source for your muscle gaining as well. So just be careful, careful and conscious of that. One thing I did notice is that when you work out, when you're lifting weights, I should say, and training to lift weights, your body's going to be in repair mode for 24 hours to 48 hours after that. Yeah. When you're running or doing high intensity cardio, you're only going to be burning that amount for that amount of time, right? Once right. you're done, you're done. Your body's not going to go into repair mode after that, like it does with weight training. Right. So if you want to burn more calories, you want to lose fat, the best way to go about it is to weight train. It's not to get on a, a yeah. treadmill and run 10 miles. That's what I tell everybody. Yeah. Like start lifting heavy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Eat, eat good carbs, good fats, good proteins. And by that, I mean nuts and berries and fruit and vegetables. And I, you mentioned not eating a lot of red meat right now. I'm not on any red meat at all. So I'm pescatarian and pretty much all bird. So chicken, eggs, and fish. And it seems, to, my body seems to thrive on it. And how do you, how do you cook it? Do you just grill it up or do you, how do you so cook? So I'm in an apartment. I wish. <laughs> um, I put it in the oven. I bake it or I do it on a George Foreman grill. Mm. Um, those are kind of my two ways. And then I saute my vegetables and I usually hard boil my eggs to be honest. Okay. Just cause it's an easy grab and go. Right. Snack, right. Which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's something that um, I think I need to focus more on because, like I said, I eat healthy, but I don't really, I don't have a diet. I don't adhere to any sort of diet typically. Yeah. I, well, you look great, and I'll say that I, f- I felt that way, and that's how I was eating, and then I just have slightly changed my macros here in the last week, and it's crazy what, like, our body is science, you know? Yeah. I it think really- our diet is science. Well, and I was telling my wife the other day, cause I, I eat healthy, but in, I, like I said, I don't eat till 11 o'clock every day, but I typically eat like, like I'll grill up a flank steak and I'll make like cook up three eggs and that's my lunch every day. But then I like, at like one o'clock in the afternoon, I kind of get this crash. Like, I just feel like, ugh, like just heavy and just, I'm like, why do I feel this way? I should feel good. Right. But I feel like crap. You don't have enough fats and carbs in that meal. It's Thanks. a lot of protein, right? So you got meat yeah. and eggs. You have a little bit of fat in those eggs. Well, I eat, uh, eat pork yolks. rinds too. Okay, right so there after. You go. Well, that, so. that works. <laughs> a little bit of salt, a little bit of carbs. That's that's good. 
Yeah, it has a quite a quite a bit of carbohydrates in it. Yeah, but and sodium's good too for you. You need sodium to yeah. keep that water in your muscles. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I mean that's part of my diet, but yeah, I just feel like crap afterwards. I don't know. Um, you know, I don't really have an explanation for that. Like I said, I'm not a dietitian. <laughs> Maybe stop eating so much steak. I don't know. <laughs> then that's, that's my goal. I plan on eating like more chicken and ho- possibly more fish. I'm not a huge fish person, but I need to learn how to like cook it possibly, you know, yeah. a little bit better. Um, tin foil with the fish, lots of oil, lemons, and seasoning. There's nothing wrong with extra seasoning on stuff, you know, especially mm-hmm. when I'm eating the same meal over and over. I try not to cook more than two days in a row because I like to eat fresh. Right. But I will season the crap out of everything just because it tastes better yeah so absolutely. hot sauce or seasoning <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get too crazy and just be like salt and pepper is all i use yeah there's no way no, i've got a good. whole couple shelves and some, <laughs> like good seasoning stores there's nothing i'm like i don't know you can't beat a good seasoning store traverse city's got a couple places saugatuck has some really good places go to holland they've got good seasoning stores too so i'd like to find a good seasoning store and kind of buy yeah. them out yeah yeah absolutely so uh, when is this comp- this cha- this competition this bikini is it is it it's not a is it a competition it is a competition okay. they call it a bikini competition okay so originally you know when you set your own goals you you have a plan and you set out to do something you still want to seek counsel it's like the Bible tells you all the time seek counsel seek advice so I've gone to a couple of trusted people and asked them this is my package what do you think and I wanted to do a show in June I was dead this is your package. Yeah, they could call it presenting your package. Your is best. that your body? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's pretty bad, right? It doesn't sound appropriate. But so when when I went to these people, I asked them, like, you know, June, let's do June. And they looked at me like, Drew, you're natural. You're not ready yet. And you're not going to be in a show in June. So This June. This June. Ooh, yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually, so going back to seeking the advice and the counsel, I'm not opposed to taking somebody that I respect and I trust their opinion and and putting it to use. So I'm not going to rush it because if I rush it and I go out on stage and I don't do well, I've put in two years of my time and my efforts and my work. Mm -hmm. I think it would be very damaging to me mentally to do that. So I'm going to take the advice that I was given. I'm going to work a little bit harder. I'm going to put in more time. I'm going to add a couple, probably eight to 12 weeks on to my prep time. Um, and then we're going to do a show probably in September, October. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's gotten pushed back, but it's okay. It's going to be a better package. <laughs> <laughs> so when you come to them with your package, what are, what are what kind of things are they looking for? So posing. And that's what you were doing today? Correct. Yes. Okay. I had some posing coaching today at 10 a.m. It went awesome, but it was my first posing session. Um, there was only three other girls there. One of the... Th- three had done competitions before the other two had not. So I felt like I was kind of in the right place, right? There's some other people that are new to this as well. Um, But it is posing, it's confidence, walking on stage, having that charisma, having the looks, having the skin. Your skin needs to be clear and complexion needs to be good. Um, And then symmetry. They want to see symmetry throughout your body. So shoulders match the waistline, which match the, the legs, which match the calves. So the whole body needs to fit to itself, I guess. You don't want to have really big legs and a small upper body. Mm, Really big upper body and small legs. I love that. Yeah. I love when people are just jacked. (laughs) On one spot. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. their upper body specifically, (laughs) and then their legs are just like... (laughs) Well, I see a lot of guys wearing pants in the gym, and I believe that's for a reason. (laughs) So women train legs more than guys. I see it all the time. I mean, I see women on squat racks and doing hip thrusts all of the time. I do legs all the time. Like my, I have thick legs though. Yeah. Like I, it's, I mean, a lot of it is like uh, just genetic. Yes. And so I show them off. Like I wear short shorts to work. <laughs> People, guys hate me. I'm sure that women like it. Yes, but. we do. <laughs> <laughs> guys will be jealous because it's hard. I was talking to somebody today about uh, one of the girls mentioned and I genetics. I've got great calves and I told her. I don't even want to say this, but like, I don't even train calves, you know, (laughs) like that's just genetics. I hate to say it, but it is. And I was talking to somebody and he's like, you know, calves are the hardest thing for me to grow. And as soon as I stopped working on them, they deflated. They just went away. (laughs) So I know that everybody loves a nice set of legs. Yeah, absolutely. It's It's your foundation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you need to have strong legs. Absolutely need to. 100%. Yeah. I don't know. Um, One day I was wearing short shorts and, everybody everybody makes fun of it like they they all make fun of me wearing short shorts i'm like 
Guys, your legs don't look like this. So shut- pasty white thighs, maybe what they're making fun of. Maybe, but I'm not. They're not that. I mean, I'm 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 Honduran, so they're not like that. Yeah, pasty. they can't be that bad. They're not that bad. <laughs> yeah. So when they so they're looking for symmetry essentially, yeah. and is there like measurements or anything? So we like divide that? up. There's different classes. You've got bikini. You've got physique. You've got wellness, and you've got bodybuilding. There's a couple different categories that you can go into. Bikini being the least muscular of all. Okay. Um, they don't want striations. They don't want super defined lines. It's more plump, round, and full, mm. um, which is pretty, right? And it's feminine. Um, some of those other categories, you start to see more muscle striations, bigger definition, um, and the outfits change as well. So bikinis will change into different types of bikinis and styles and not showing so much of the glutes like the bikini does. Um but they go based on height and then they based on age as well. So I'm actually really tall for the sport. Hmm. Most of the women are smaller and in bodybuilding in general, most people are smaller. So I will be in class C or D, I believe is what like five, nine and up will be. Okay. And then also by age, which I'm struggling with this, but it's okay. I pray about it. (laughs) Um, I am 34 years old and the cutoff is at 35. Whoa. So I'll be judged with all the youngins who are really tight and firm. (laughs) (laughs) And then if I was to do a show next year, then I would be judged for 35 to a certain category and then they do 55 and up. Oh, okay. So we do get separated a little bit, but at the end you still have it all around uh, best in show too. So what happens if you win? What do you, do you receive anything? So there's a, depends on which federation you're going to go in. And then, um, if you're at a regional show, if you're at uh, a national show, so you get a pro card. And then once you w- win your pro card is when you can go to the national and compete nationally. But, um, some places have winnings, you know, $1,500 wow. maybe. Yeah. Which is decent. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you the cost of all of this mm. is very expensive. Absolutely. Especially eating. That's probably got to be the greatest the cost. expense. I'm yeah. going to the grocery store like every two days and it's like another hundred dollars, <laughs> another hundred dollars. Yeah. And the protein supplements, the micros, you know, the vitamins, all of those things. And yeah. then on top of it, you have posing coaches, you have training coaches, um, and then you've got dietitians too. So, you know, there's quite a few people that need to be involved. It is a team effort. It is not just me. Right. So why did you choose this out of all things? I was told that I'm genetically built for the sport. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, yeah, let's go. Let's go with it. <laughs> um, no, I just, you know, I was looking back through my phone even like 10, 15 years ago, I had pictures of women that were in bikini competitions. It's obviously been a goal of mine, something I didn't really attack until maybe the last year or so. But I think that they're beautiful. I I think that they represent women well. They're strong, they're feminine, and they're dedicated, obviously, which is just great characteristics of a human. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. When you see somebody who puts that much effort into their body. You're like, okay, that's a person that respects themselves. hundred percent. Well, and I'll tell you, this is a roller coaster. You have to have your mind in place. There's no way that you can show up and get on stage. If you don't have it together here, here and in the body, right. You know, it's yeah, a mental I mean, game just as much as it is. a physical. You could, you could put all the work in, in the gym, but yeah, you have to have some sort of balance with that too. Right. Like, I mean, yoga or meditation. I love the hot yoga. I've been going to hot yoga probably two to three times a week. You go to East Lansing. That's yeah. the best. I know. They have, I love that place. Yeah, best classes, best instructors. Yep. So I, I love that place. And it helps with my um, flexibility, my hip mobility for all of my training and stuff. And it just keeps me fresh and the mindset to come back at the end of the day and put all of my issues aside and just meditate for an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah. I remember the first time I went to East Lansing Hot Yoga, I was laying there. It was a guy instructor. I don't even know who it was. <clears throat> But at the end of the the yoga session, he's like kind of guiding us through this meditation. And I'm like laying there exhausted, covered in sweat. Yeah. And he's like, I, I, don't, I don't remember what he was saying, but I just started having like these visuals of being like laying in on a beach. And he's and I could hear waves crashing and a totally different mindset. I felt like I felt like I was hallucinating. Like I felt like I was like like having this like weird experience body experience yeah yeah and then i came back to it and i was like oh man i want to go back (laughs) (laughs) you're kicking you out now time for the next class (laughs) um yeah i just and the people there are awesome they're loving they're accepting my favorite instructor over there is mike richter he Mm, was a former teacher at i think it was waverly or eastern i think it was eastern um 
but most of his classes are, I would say, extremely challenging, sometimes even more challenging than some of my workouts. Yeah, they're um, hard. They are. Yeah. yeah, there's a kick your asana class. Yeah, that's the like, worst. <laughs> so a 90 minute class of that. And you I've lost I've got on a scale and I've lost four pounds of water weight from one class. Before. I believe that. <laughs> yeah. I believe it's like, that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but mindset wise, it puts you back in a place where you yeah. just. You showed up, you gave it your efforts, you came there, you meditated, you practiced with other people, you shared your practice, and it's, you. I never leave that place feeling worse than when I came in. Mm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you you go in there not wanting to do it. Oh, that's but. almost every day at the gym and at the yoga. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because I'm, like, super excited. It's, I've made a choice, I've made it, set a goal, and I'm dedicated to it. I've got drive. I'm, I'm Nobody's going to stop me now. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. That's so cool. Thanks. So what what do you think you'll do after after this bikini challenge? You know, I've been talking a lot about it, and I've just had so many people reach out and ask me, like, how do I get started? What can I do? Can you share this with me? And I would love to help some other people. I would love to get start certified, coaching. yeah, and start helping other people just achieve what the, they didn't think they could achieve. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you're the perfect person. I mean, you have the perfect story. You were, you're were you a lot heavier. You were able to conquer that, defeat, defeat all those inner battles. Yeah. And then, I mean you're here now you're you're <laughs> fit you've you you will accomplish something that you're training for and i think you have the perfect story to help somebody thank you and i hope so that's you know one of the main reasons i came on here today is to be able to help others and to see if there's anybody else out there that feels the way that i did because it, it just takes one little step in the right direction and then the next decision gets easier and then the next decision gets easier after that so i mean there's so many people that will listen to this and be like yeah th i'm definitely that person or i'm i i understand those Th those inner battles or I understand like being that person. I mean, there's so many people that have like, I've had people on, you know, with similar stories that were fat and then they just started running and they shed it, they shed all this weight and then now they're fit. And so many people resonate with that. Yes. And because it's like a hero story, right? Like people are like, wow, like it's possible. Like that, that is me. And I need to get to where they're at right now. Sure. Well, and like I said, the underdog, right? We all cheer yeah. for the underdog. Yeah. It's like everybody wants to see the person that doesn't look like they're going to make it, make it and pull through and come through. There's no, there's no greater blessing than seeing somebody who's at rock bottom come back and, you know, climb that mountain. Yeah. And I'm in the middle of climbing still, but I feel like it's Mount Everest. <laughs> 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 We're going to get to the top, I promise. But, you know, I just, I love what I'm doing. I can't sit here and say I, I dread it because I don't. I feel good about it. I feel healthy. I have more energy throughout the day. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm here to help others and to also let people know that this was all achieved through God, really. You know, just knowing that through him, I am saved and I'm redeemed and I don't have to be shamed of what I've done and that I can go out every day and better myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Um when does your day start? What time? What time do you wake up? Uh, it usually fluctuates, but I, I would I set my alarm around 4.30 to 5 in the morning. Okay. Um, and I'm in bed by 8 p.m., 9. Um, I'm a grandma. So I mean, I, I'm a grandpa really. then because, like, yeah. I go to bed at, like, 8, 8.30, definitely by 9. Yeah. If, not, if I'm not in bed by 9, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be so tired tomorrow. <laughs> and the only reason I would say sometimes that I stay up a little bit later is if I've done a late night exercise, my circadian rhythm gets thrown off a little bit. Because my body doesn't want to shut down yet. It's right. like, you just pushed me so hard. My heart rate was up to 150. And we're not cooling down yet. So, <laughs> yeah, there's some times when I catch myself and I'm like, it's 2 a.m. I have to be up in like four oh hours. My gosh. Yeah, this is awful. <laughs> so, um, I've, I've been self-conscious a little bit about choosing my times for workouts, too. I like That's why I like to get it done in the morning so that I'm able to shut down at night. Right. Yeah, and it kind of sets the tone for the day, too. 100%. You yeah. feel good. You feel great. And if you had any anger in the morning, which I struggle with my anger still, <laughs> uh, you get it out, right? You just push weights, push heavier yeah, weights, yeah. and then you're you're like, I'm so sorry, I wouldn't even want to punch you if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, working out in the morning, it, it helps, like, set the mind for the day. It calms everything, like, all the angst. Like, it's interesting because I, I either run or I do the elliptical typically out every morning. Okay. I either do one or the other. And some days I'll sleep in and I, that that's very it's rare. Day. It's very, yeah, it's a rest day. I still do it though, but I'll, I'll do it later in the day. Um, but you know, the thing is like when I, when I go to work and I, I have a, a workout prior to going to work, I feel great. Like I, like anything that would typically bother me if I hadn't worked out 
doesn't bother me at all. Well, you've I feel, accomplished something, right? Yeah. Yeah, you feel accomplished. I mean, you have a win for the day. Already. And, and everybody around you, they, you know, they just woke up, they drank their coffee and came to work. Rushed their kids to the school bus, you know. Yeah. I, I will say that David Goggins is kind of the one that set that mindset for me too, was we're not going to look at our alarm and hit snooze, right? Because you failed. You've already failed. So I've started... Well, I used to set my alarm every 15 minutes <laughs> until I would get up. And now I'm like, no, David Goggins says it's 4.30. You're getting up, Drew. You're not going to fail already, so get up. Um, and I use that, too, because I think it's important to not have a fail in the beginning of the day. You yeah. need to have an accomplishment Yeah. because um, it sets your day right. It really does. because I And that's something I realized, like, the days I don't wake up it, and I just have to, and I have to get in the shower and get ready and go to work, yeah. I feel like crap. Like... I'm like, I feel like a failure. You feel like you didn't have a win for the day. Well, you don't have that adrenaline, like endorphin release, right? right so it's right. like endorphins are free, guys. They're free. <laughs> well, and there's something to doing something difficult in the morning. You know, like if like the, I wake up at 345 every morning. Okay. And so if I, if I come down to the elliptical and I get on and I don't want to do it, I'm tired. I just, but I, I force myself to do it anyways. Yeah. 10 minutes in, I'm like, oh, I feel great. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I did this, but it's hard. It's still hard, but I'm so it's happy hard, I did it. But yeah. yeah. That's yeah. how I feel about running too. Um, Running's the same way too. Yeah. I just, it's never my thing, but then I'll get a run in and it's like, okay, that, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I stepped I out that a little bit more often. Yesterday morning, I stepped out and I didn't realize it was raining. And so if I had known it was raining, I probably would have chose to go down and do the elliptical instead. Sure. And so I got all my gear on. I'm ready. And I step outside. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. And I was like, maybe I should just go do the elliptical. <laughs> and I'm like, no, David Goggins, would, would, run, in he would run in the rain. 100%. And so I just went and ran. And it was amazing. It felt it felt great. So happy I did it. Yeah, of course you do. Well, and especially when you have those even harder uh, situations with the weather, you know, it puts a little yeah. extra pressure on you. So it really not does. only did you not want to do it, but now the weather's not good. Exactly. So you got two for one accomplishments there. <laughs> yeah. That's two yeah. birds, one stone. It makes you feel even better. And I, I did that today too. I ran in the rain again. It was, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it's awesome. I enjoy it. I was actually making fun of the people that were running in the rain. All the way here. I'm like, you man, you gotta losers. be MSU cross country because there's no way you'd be doing that without that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But, you know, that's dedication um, at its finest right there. Yeah. It won't mean, catch me running in the rain. Unless <laughs> it's running from my car to the building. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something to doing hard things, but then having other elements that make it harder. Because, like, it, it's hard to run in the morning, but you kind of get accustomed to it. Right. And then if something were to come up, like, let's say it's snowing or it's raining or it's really windy and you don't want to go out or it's just really cold. And you're like, oh, I, th I, th I think I could just go do the elliptical or I could do the bike or whatever. But I think having those elements every now and then, it, it helps it. Helps it. Like, yeah. it makes it easier. So, like, oh, it, ra it rained yesterday. I ran in the rain. I'll, I'll be fine today. Well, and I'm sure at some point you kind of feel like if you don't get that done, you've missed out. Because I know that I make it a priority. Mm, and if it's yeah. like, okay, this is my habit, right? I'm in the habit of getting up and going to the gym. Somebody's like, I need your help at 9 a.m., well, then I got to move my work up, workout up till, you know, four or five in the morning so I can get that all done, come back, get ready and then do that because I'm not going to miss it. Right. You can change my schedule, but the gym session is still happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just fit it in before. Yeah, I'll get up earlier. That's a, that's actually a really important thing for discipline is, is finding ways to adapt your schedule to the, to the daily things that routine. just, ha just happen. Yeah. You know, like if, if you're, if you have a routine where you work out at nine o'clock every morning and then something comes up, most people would just be like, well, I guess I'll work out tomorrow. And I'm guilty of it. I do it too. Right. It's, it's so easy to do. hundred percent. But if you have that mindset of like, no, I'm going to get it in no matter what. And so you just decide that you're going to wake up earlier to get it in. Like that's dedication. Well, and I will say that at, at some point, some people realize that this is me and this is what I'm going to do. So now they're like, so Drew, when are you going to be at the gym <laughs> so that we can do this? <laughs> but no, with real estate too, my, my schedules changes a lot. It fluctuates. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times my clients, you know, they have nine to five jobs. People that work full time are the ones that can buy houses. So after five for me are my busy hours. That's for why for me, it's important to get my workout in the morning so that I can be available in the afternoon or in later in the day. But 
when a house is going up for sale in this market, as you know, sometimes you got to get in right away. Yeah. So I'm not afraid to adjust my schedule, but I can guarantee you that I will not miss my workout that day. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love that mentality. Yeah. And that's super motivating for me because like, I, I, like I said, I'm guilty of like, Oh, I'll just, I guess I can't cause I'm a super busy person. Yeah. Um, I work, you know, I work full time and then I have a business and then I'm kids, and, kids a wife. and a wife and a house <laughs> and like all this other stuff. So I'm always busy doing something, but I'm guilty of like, Oh, well I have an appointment tomorrow. I guess I'm not going to get my lift in after work. So I'll just push it till tomorrow. Like it, I'm, super guilty of this yes and so like hearing that is like wow maybe i should just wake up early <laughs> well that was the thing for me too for setting a goal because when i set that goal it's like okay so now you are as much as this show is for me and i'm in competition with myself i'm getting judged against other women that are going to be up there but i want to know at the end of the day that i've done everything possible that i left nothing on the table whatsoever in order for me to be in the best position to take home a pro card, to win, to to be the one that says, you know, you are the overall winner. I, when I'm in that mood of, oh, hey, I'm going to push this off and cancel this, I'm like, so are you going to be okay with second place? Mm, are you going to be okay with yeah. third place, Drew? How are you going to feel? And that's when I'm like, no, I'm not going to be okay with it. I just, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be okay with it. At the end of the day, of course, I, I it's probably going to be a realistic thing. I don't expect to finish first at everything I do. But, but that's the mindset that you have to have. You train like you're going to be exactly. first. Exactly. That's the training yeah. that I do. Mindset is first. Give it your all. Leave nothing on the table. And if I leave one day where I missed a training session, guess what? You left that on the table. It's for somebody else to come up and grab and take. Yeah. And that's the way that I see it. They're going to be doing two times better than me, not just one time better than me. Because I left it on the table. That's such an important mindset to have. So many people lack that. Well... When you hit rock bottom, <laughs> you're just like, I'm done, man. Well, and it's a thing with comfort, too. People seek comfort just naturally. Everybody wants to be. stops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody wants to be comfortable. Everybody doesn't want to to push themselves to that next that next level. But to have that mindset where someone's going to take food from you yeah. is important. It is. That's the way you have to see it. Yeah. Because it is. I mean, it's a world of survival of the fittest. I hate to say it, but it is. Um, and if you leave it on the table, somebody's going to come up and take it. Whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, um, competition, you name it. Somebody else is going to be thankful for that opportunity yeah. if, if you're going to leave it up there. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Thanks. Um, so you also do real estate. I do. When did you start doing that? So I started working for the Top Flight Financial Mortgage Company in 2012, I want to say. Um, I got into mortgages, and then I went to work for an appraisal company. And then I went to work for a real estate company. I was two years at the appraisal office, a year at the mortgage company. Um, and then I started working for Remax, McIntyre & Cowan out of Frandor. And they had like nine or ten buyer's agents. I was doing initial QC, which – or not initial QC, sorry um, – uh, now I can't even think of it. Anyways, I was talking to the clients and I was spreading out leads with the agents and I was seeing how much these agents were bringing back on their paychecks. And I'm like, I got the wrong job here, man. This is <laughs> not right. So I decided that I wanted to study and get my license for real estate. So in 2017, I made it a goal and I was blessed and highly favored. So I went out and I passed my test the first time and I've been uh -huh. yeah licensed since 2017. And then this year I've made it a goal to get my broker's license, which I probably should have done like two years ago. Um, and then also I'm going to try and get a dual license and get my license in Florida too. Wow. So many people in Michigan buy houses in Florida and it's such a reciprocal state that yeah. I would miss out on clients that are, you know, down there buying houses too. So definitely want to get my license in Florida. Yeah. That's awesome. So what has, I mean, we were talking a little bit about the, the market and everything prior to the podcast, but what is what has it been like the last couple of years? I mean, I know there for like right after COVID and during COVID, people were buying houses like crazy. Uh, the interest rates were lower, and there was I, I think there was a shortage of houses, right? There was a large shortage of, of houses. We were seeing, I think it was you know anywhere from eleven to fifteen houses on a coming out on a daily basis for new listings. And previous to that, since like two thousand seventeen, we would see forty to sixty. Whoa. Right. So it was a major shortage um, of inventory. And, and this it was like that everywhere. 
Right? Uh, everywhere, yes, but specifically in the greater Lansing area, it was difficult. I mean, I think some other states were even more severe than us. But you could have bought a house um, like three years ago, done nothing to it, and seen a 15 to 20% increase in value just yeah. by turning around and selling it, literally doing nothing yeah. to it. I know people that did that. <laughs> yeah. So the, the housing market spiked. Um, interest rates were low. I drove prices up. I was going around with buyers last year writing offers thirty to forty thousand dollars above <laughs> listing price, giving sixty days occupancy, waiving home inspections, and guaranteeing appraisals, and we weren't getting offers accepted. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, and, and then you have to go back to your buyer and explain to them that they took fourth or fifth place. Wow. And it's it was difficult. We all I think we all struggled, you know? It was hard. So is it making it difficult to make money now? It, it has made it difficult to make money. We're commission based, right? So if right. we don't have inventory, we don't have sales. Right. Um, and the average person in real estate lasts three years and then they're out. Well, that's something that I also, I guess I want to ask you because I know so many people that are realtors or that had recently became realtors. And it seems like it's almost like the go-to thing now that people want to do. Like it's, it's popular. It's pretty like, easy to obtain your license, right? So it's a 40 hour class and one test. Okay. So it's not like, you know, some of these hairdressers, I think that they have to do like 1800 hours. I know appraisers have like thousands of hours that they have to do as wow. apprenticeships for real estate. You do 40 hours of classes and you take a state exam and you can be licensed and sell real estate. You could do it in a week and be a licensed realtor within a week and, and go sell a house. Wow. But I will tell you that they don't teach you how to write contracts. They don't mm. teach you any negotiation. It's more law and, okay. and uh, definition. Interesting. For the, for the testing. Yeah. So the standards are pretty low. I would say that the standards are one of the lowest for um, a state license. So has there been a huge influx in realtors joining the market? Um, you know, it varies. And I can't say what the exact number that we have on our board right now because I don't know. Um, but like I said, that transition comes in and out, right? You, yeah. They get in, they get their license, they realize how hard it is, how, how many dues they have, how many fees they have, that your broker is going to take a certain percentage. And they're like, oh, it doesn't seem as good as it looks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, like, I mean, just like anything, it's not easy. Right. And I you mean, have to fight. You have to get your sphere of influence and find people that are connected to you, connected to the community, and then go based off referrals. You right. know, you just need to get your good name out there, do good business, be in it for the right reasons, not for the money. Yeah. It's for the clients. That's why you're there. Right. Um, which is a huge, important stressor. I think that some people are just in it for the money. I've seen, um, a lot of people buy houses that should have been warned about things. Um, and it's like, I feel so bad for you. How can we help you? You know? Right. Um, it's just making sure that people are in solid homes with good foundations and good structures. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. I mean, that's so important. That's the, that's the number one thing when you buy a house, yeah. you want to make sure that it's not going to fall over or cave into the ground or good investment too. Right. You need yeah. some equity too. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that's something that's very difficult right now for anybody to have equity in their home. Yes, I mean that bought that just recently bought, bought within the last year or two, right? They're going to struggle, and they're yeah. going to not even, not only that, but not be paying down on their principal for their mortgage for right. a long time, right? If you don't touch that principal for a while because you're paying on interest still, right? So your goal is to be a broker and to uh, be dual licensed. Yes. What What's next after that? I mean, you're obviously a goal setting person. I try. Um, <laughs> you know, I just I really my biggest goal is to spread the, the word of God. So as many people that I can come in contact with, whether it be fitness, gym, real estate, my parents own a business. I help a lot of, with my parents tree business too. What, what's the name of their business? Discount trees out in Mason. Oh, they are, okay. Yeah. Full yeah. landscaping company. I used to uh, work for right tree service and we dumped uh wood chips. Oh yeah. There. In our yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for all those wood chips. They help us. <laughs> and then I have to go shovel them out in neighbor's yards. <laughs> Um, that's a good workout by the way. Oh, it is. Well, that's how I, yeah. like this summer I trained really hard. My mom had me planting all the bald and burlap trees. I'm digging <laughs> like five to 10 holes a day and I'm oh my like, gosh. Oh, they're so hard. Yeah. And when you have dry ground, it's hard. So it, it was the best shape of my life though. I came back and looking at my <laughs> shoulders like, man, we need to do more shoveling out here. <laughs> um, so goal setting, it's just, I want to spread the word of God really. I mean, yeah. I don't really have any other agenda other than how do, how do you plan on doing that? Letting people know my journey and my testimony. I come in contact with people every day and I'm like smiling and they're like, I love your energy. And it's like, this is possible because of him, not because of me. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm trying to express. Do you think that you could ever be like a life coach? You know, have you ever thought about that? I have not thought about that, to be honest. There's a lot of people that have told me, oh, you're so great at motivational speaking. You're encouraging. You're, you know, 
my dad is that way a lot. Like my dad has instilled so many positive thoughts and just mindsets and phrases and sayings that we went through like childhood. And it was like, I can accomplish anything. My dad used to say like anything a guy can do, Drew, you can do three times better. Mm, And it's like, okay. I started believing it as a kid. You believe it. You get brainwashed. I would say, and I got brainwashed into believing that I could achieve anything. So being able to spread that and kind of, I would say share my dad's good aspects and his good role modeling would be awesome. And I, I do believe that there's a potential for that, but I have not sought it. Mm. That limiting belief in yourself is such a crippling thing. Mm, so many 100%. people, so many people struggle. And I, I, I hear so many people like, I mean, so many people that I, I love and care about, they're like, Oh, I can't do that. Or like, you're awesome for doing that. Like I couldn't do that. I'm like, you could totally do, do it. it. Right. Just believe in yourself. Just do it. Believing and in yourself is 90% of the battle. That is. Yeah. 90%. You're right. Like there's, I mean, like I have a friend, he, he just bought a, a smoker the other day. Okay. And, uh, he's super critical of himself. He's like, I'm trying to figure out how I need to cut this brisket, you know, so that, you know, this is my first time ever doing it. And yesterday he's like, I think I messed up the brisket. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I, I cut it wrong. I'm pretty sure. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you haven't even thrown it on the smoker yet. Like, how did you mess it up? <laughs> and then he texts me this morning. And he's like, dude, Best this brisket. he's like, this brisket is amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, see, there you go. Like, that's that limiting belief thing. Like you believe, you believed before you even started that it was, it was a, you weren't going to succeed. Like you right. thought you were a failure. So it's funny you say that because my trainer today, he's talking to me and he's like, yeah, Drew. So like, have you picked a show yet? And I was like, no. It's like, have you picked a show yet? And I was like, no. It's like, man, you set all these goals. You're so driven. You go out and then you just keep pushing off the show. Keep pushing <laughs> off the show. And I'm like, all right, I get it. All right, I get it. I'll pick a show. So, you know, that limiting belief. I mean, I'm this close, right? I look so great. Some people tell me I look fabulous. And then there's these little voices in the back of your head, just mm, like everybody yeah. has. And it's like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm done with you. So I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress, man. We are but, healing, not healed. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's it's a journey, right? It's, it is. It's not a process where you just, you, you get there and you're done. Right. You're always chasing that. You're always trying to heal and get better. Because like, you're better today than you were yesterday, but Absolutely. it's always going to be, every day is going to be a new battle. So. Well, and you've, get good at one thing or you fix that one thing and then you know you look back at your to-do list and there's 20 more on the list oh yeah (laughs) so it is always going to be a work in progress there's no doubt about that but that that is progress absolutely when when you good point (laughs) that is progress when you have more things on your plate and you're like okay well i guess i need to like do this but yesterday you accomplished this and this and this right progress well and even with bad situations too i look at things like oh this didn't go my way or this I had a simple, small knee injury, just was playing volleyball, and I don't know what I did to my knee exactly. I didn't get any medical diagnosis, but I tweaked it. It didn't feel good for about two to three weeks. But you know what? I worked hard on my upper body for two to three weeks. Yeah. My upper body needed it. And it was like, God is telling you that, like, slow down. You, this needs some work here, so we're going to take this away from you so that we can add on to this. Um, and I was just, I was struggling at first with that, but it was like, no, Drew, there's a blessing behind this. There is something good that's going to come of it. Your upper body's going to get more symmetrical with your lower body. Mm. And so it's just, it's about mindset too. It's about finding the positives through the negatives. Yeah. I actually uh, follow this guy. His name's Nick Kumalatsos or something like that. Okay. I met him last year. He's like this uh, online person, um, but he's like an ex-military guy. Anyways, he was saying uh, on his Facebook feed, he was like, he was somebody had said something about like, oh, well, I'm injured, so I can't train. And he's like, what's injured and they're like <laughs> yeah. well my knee and he's like work your upper body modifications <laughs> work your abs yeah. like where you could do that you can still do things don't stop exactly well and a lot of my exercises went from standing to seated mm, right it's yeah like, let's just get off the knee let's give it a little bit of break here but when you're standing you're using a lot more of your core right when you're seated you're going to be targeting specific muscles a little bit right, more. right so i started to see major gains just from staying seated and just working hard on the delts is like, okay, I think God was telling me I should have done this like months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Go out and injure your other knee. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, is there anything else you want to like talk about? I think you should, you honestly should do a podcast. Well, I appreciate yeah. that, but 
You probably I, don't have time. Well, that's what I was just thinking. I've got a couple goals we got to accomplish here first, but I'll put it on the goal list. How about that? I think, I mean, you, you have like a desire to want to help people. And I think that like your, your story, I mean, obviously there's more to your story sure. that you haven't told on the podcast. Right, well, and I won't cry. So uh, <laughs> that's why we're avoiding some of those things. But I, I think that a lot of people could benefit from listening to you talk about your journey and, and listening to you talk about some of the goals you've set and how you've accomplished them and what you're currently still doing. Well, and I, that, that's really what I want. You obviously want to help people. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. I mean, that's how you give back to people. That's what God wants, right, is to help others. We're here to fight the battle that we're fighting on this earth until we get to eternity where we can all just have no worries, no stress, and live happily ever after. But to, together we need to help each other while we're here. Yeah, I mean, that's. I think that's why everybody's here, right? Yes, 100%. I mean, Some people <laughs> stray, right? You got to go find that one lamb or sheep, but... You know, it's worth it. The 99 will stay here for that one. We have to go find that one. Got to go grab them. Yeah. Um, I love it. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome back anytime. Actually, I want to have you back uh, either before your uh, competition. I don't know. It might be too much prior. It will be fine. It will be good for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah it would be awesome to have you on and then maybe even after. If... Yeah, both would be great. Yeah. And I'll come in here and smile whether I got first, <laughs> second, third, or fifth. <laughs> Wearing your medals or holding your card or whatever. Whatever it is. My $1,500 check. That would be sweet. That would be awesome. That would be sweet. Well, and it would go to charity for a good donation, so. What, what charity are you, are you going to pick? Um, you know, probably abused women. Okay. It would be a good one. Is that it, something it that... Home. Okay. Yeah. So, there's a lot of women out there that need it. And mental health is a big issue, too, so... More than ever. Yes. Obviously, we've seen it close to home here with the whole incident. Um, MSU. Yeah. It's terrible. It's sad. And we need more mental health in this country. So I need help towards that. And then women and children would be my probably my two go-tos. Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, the whole mental health thing. It's like I I don't know what can be done because obviously we're in a crisis, right? Like, and something's happening in our culture where it's like – it's exponential. Like it's grown so strong, like within the last couple of years. Sure. And with COVID even worse. And COVID just made everything worse. Yeah. And so like, what, could, what can be done? Because like, I, don't, I know somebody that was trying to get therapy and they have good insurance and they were like, I need to see a therapist. Like today I'm having this mental like crisis. Um, I'm feeling like I might be suicidal, but they, they weren't going to do anything. And they told the insurance company this, and the insurance company's like, I'll, I'll call you back. I'll try to find a, a therapist that would be willing to take your insurance and blah, blah, blah. Well, they didn't call back. Of course not. They never called back. Right. And it's like, why isn't that a priority? Somebody said that they're in this crisis. Like, It should be treated it, just as a bleeding person on the side of the street. Yeah. It, it really should, because mental health is a bigger issue than some physical health. Um, Absolutely. I mean, like, and how do you, I mean, what do you do about that? You know, like you said, insurances need to be more involved. We need a higher education on it. We need to see signs um, of it earlier on. And it, it starts early on. I do feel like that, too. But it also, it, I mean, I hate to say it, but it goes back to rearing your life around God and what is good for you and knowing that there aren't things out here that are judging you. Because I do feel like a lot of mental health issues come from judgment, shame, guilt, uh, past experiences, and those things can all be forgiven um, and wiped clean. I mean, like, even if you're not religious, you you need purpose in life. Sure. And that's something that, like, I've struggled with um, prior to doing the podcast is that, like, I struggled with purpose. I struggled with finding, like, what is my path in life? Like, I know I want to help people, but how can I, like, use my story to help somebody? And so I would just chase these dumb things. Like, it would be, like... I ran a 50 mile ultra. So I'd put all my focus into this ultra run or, um, yeah, it's just like these madness things. I did kettlebell competitions, um, and just trained for these random things. Right. I had no goal, no, like no like specific goal in mind. And, and I had no purpose. Essentially. I felt like I had no purpose and I felt like it was creating like this mental health problem for myself. Right. And once I started doing the podcast and found out like, my story helped other people and I found out that like people coming onto the podcast, sharing their personal stories and seeing the feedback from that and how like them sharing their story helps people like oh, you does. sharing your story on here probably makes you feel good. Oh, it does. Yeah. And I've had so many people tell me like, 
I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a professional like podcaster. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> you're doing awesome. I'm not that great, great at it. But the thing is, is like just giving people that experience, giving people that ability to come on and share their story. It, it's super therapeutic for me. It makes me feel like I have a purpose. You do. And I think a lot of people lack that purpose. I think a lot of people don't know what their path in life is. And so then that's kind of why we're in a mental health crisis, especially with like the social media and seeing how other people have better lives than other people. Comparison, right? Yeah, exactly. Competing with the Joneses next door. Yeah, I mean, and somebody might look at you and be like, wow, she's so fit. Like, I wish I could be like her. But they're not willing to find their that that path in life. They just, they're just jealous. Well, and sometimes and, people don't even see that I came from 200 pounds, right? I mean, right. They're looking at the person that I am today, but they didn't see the pastor two years ago who was on her knees crying, asking God to help her because she was suicidal. That's who I want people to know. That person, even though I was ashamed of her, today I'm proud of her because I hit that spot and I bounced right back up. But also going back to mental health and helping other people, when I was at my lowest, I would find so much pride and so much purpose in helping somebody else do something. They're like, oh, this is going wrong in my life. Well, and I do understand that it was taking the focus off of me so I could focus <laughs> on somebody else. I get that now that I've had therapy. But at the time, it made me feel really good to help somebody else Yeah, because there was purpose in that. I knew that I went home at the end of the day and that couldn't have been accomplished if I didn't step in and help that person. Right. So finding purpose, it comes in so many different forms, but I will say that there's nothing better than helping somebody else. You get so yeah. much gratitude and just purpose out of helping. Yeah. I mean, it's a sense of community and everybody needs that community. Agreed. Yeah. Huge. Community is everything. It's huge. Yeah. I mean, you need to be a part of a tribe. A hundred percent. Well, and they say, you know, you can't raise a baby without a community. Right. So, exactly. And it's the truth. I see these moms <laughs> out here and I'm like, man, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> but then I'm there trying to help too. So, you know, it's just, you, you, we've all got to tie together, focus on the goals of just creating a good, solid, strong community that is there to help each other and support each other. Even in our hard times, everybody's going to have hard times. We're going to have trials. We're going to have tribulations, yeah. but those are going to be part of your testimony, which is then going to launch you to a whole new level. Yeah. Yeah. And people will see that and people will get motivated and inspired by it. And hopefully they change their life. Yeah. And call me, I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Drew, thanks for doing this. Yes. Thank this you for your time, fun. David. I really yeah. appreciate it. Of course. And you'll be back sometime soon. Hopefully soon. You, <laughs> I'll set you, that goal. <laughs> <laughs>